Coroner Chisholm Avenue Police Invader says Chase was out of character. number 40, 51, Hotel Zulu. If Nicole Williams could turn back the hands of time, she said she would not have engaged in a daredevil driving that sparked a police chase across the corporate era last month, which was captured in a viral video. Faced with humiliation and an ongoing judicial process, the mother of two girls is still trying to wrap her mind around the April 30 life-changing experience. I'm not here to be a victim because I know what I did. I accept what I did, Williams told reporters in an interview outside the Kingston traffic court on Tuesday. Honestly, I don't know what happened that day. I really don't know. If that day would come back, it would not happen. Mechanic in Candice Jackson murder case expected to plead guilty. Robert Fowler, the same catching mechanic who is accused of killing 20 year old accounting clerk Candice Jackson, is expected to plead guilty when he returns to court on October 5. Today, the defense told the court that it has decided against making an application for bail. My reason is a concern for his safety, one of Fowler's attorney, Lindell Wellesley, told the court. His other attorney, Altia Freeman, was absent today during a plea and case management hearing, which was also mentioned today. Wellesley asked Justice Vinet Graham Allen for more time to have serious and meaningful discussions with his client. Wellesley said the discussions are with a view to have the proceedings shortened for going a trial process. Graham Allen then adjourned the hearing. Now viewers, if you are a first time viewer, please remember to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and click the notification bell for more videos. 7 arrested over murder of man in Old Arbor. 7 people have been taken into custody by the St. Catherine South Police in connection with the abduction and murder of a man in Bullet Tree District in Old Arbor. The body of 24-year-old laborer Javan Miller was found in a hole with gunshot wounds in the community on Sunday. Miller, who was from the community, was previously reported missing. Investigations by the police resulted in the seven persons being detained on suspicion of murder and abduction. Head of the Old Arbor Subdivision, Deputy Superintendent of Police Mark Harris said investigators are following strong leads in the case. One of St. James' most wanted captured weeping. Nikilia Akile Lewis, one of the most wanted men in St. James, is now in custody. He was captured after police intercepted a car he was traveling in along the Reading Main Road in Montego Bay on Wednesday afternoon. Lewis, who resides in Lilliput, St. James, was wanted for murder and shooting with intent. Another man who was in the Nissan AD wagon with him was also arrested. Lewis wept openly as he pleaded with the officers to save his life. A police source said the cowards who are willing to kill unarmed civilians are so nervous when held by the police, said the official. Three weeks ago, Lewis was listed among persons of interest by Deputy Superintendent of Police Clive Wright. The police say Lewis was implicated in the murder of Shevane Stevens, otherwise called Alex, who was shot dead in Ocean Heights, Lilliput on January 4. 11-year-old girl raped and boogered in Clarendon, man hunt on for attacker. The police in Clarendon are on the man hunt for a male assailant who boogered and raped an 11-year-old girl. The attacker has been on the run since the May 19 incident. 
It is reported that the young girl was home alone on the night in question in a Clarendon southeastern community when the attacker broke in. She was sexually assaulted by the man who then fled the scene. Deputy Superintendent Anton Gur Cardoza, operation officer for the Clarendon Police, in confirming the incident, said the case is now with the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sissoka. He also used the opportunity to warn parents to be vigilant in the care and protection of their children. More and more we find children becoming vulnerable or victims of crime because adequate supervision seem to be lacking, he said. He said investigations are ongoing. Given his background of being a Christian, what, what do you make of the situation where he was actually on a, a church trip when the incident happened? I, I, to be honest, it is just shocking. Um, that's, that's, that's the only word that I can really think of. It's, it's just shocking. Me and David were very good friends. We went basically everywhere together. Um, I knew David since first form. I still remember the first day I first saw him when David met me and introduced himself. David was so positive, like, looking in David's eyes and he just smiled. David is the kind of person that you can go to anytime, anywhere. You can even call him and he's doing homework and he will stop him homework and say, You're good? Something happened? You're having a bad day? David is the kind of person where. David are the kind of person who makes you smile. And in come, David always have positive vibes. He could be there having the worst day of life and David could walk through the door, he just look on him. And David look by and him, he had a fist bump and everything. That was David. Right now I still can't believe that David is gone. Up to Saturday night, me and David was talking. He saying that he was going on a trip tomorrow, so he must go to him bed early. And I was saying, uh, make sure you enjoy yourself. Then I woke up Monday morning to a bunch of missed calls and messages saying, I hear the news, uh, David drowned on a church trip and couldn't believe it. I called more than seven people trying to figure out what happened until eventually I get the full story that he drowned on a church trip. And even to this morning, I was saying, I probably one big joke I'm gonna come to school and walk to the door and see the every but David never did it. David wasn't there. I met David in first form. Um we wouldn't we would we didn't have a close relationship till fourth form. Um when we started to have more classes together. Um I, I know David because in fourth form in chemistry class, every class when I was not paying attention, David would always um, make sure I pay attention. David always looked out for us, he always made sure we was focused in class. David even as Kwan said if you have a bad day, David was always looking there, looking out for you. He was that person that everyone loved and cared for it, and David has always cared for everybody. When I heard the news yesterday as yesterday morning, I was literally lost for words. You know, it just struck me. I was literally numb. I didn't eat until maybe sometime in the afternoon. You know, um, I was lost for words, and I'm still lost for words. As you can see, it is not something that I can just brush aside. So it's very, very heartening. You know, given that the the type of young man that he is is someone that I could rely on for support. You know, if there is if I need a student to you know, go to a class and relay some information, he's somebody that I could rely on. He's very helpful. Right? Very helpful, very respectful and outspoken. So he's somebody that, you know, really was dear to the the work from family. David Minot, a young man known by your support. Every student, every teacher here at Women's Boys School. A young man who, whose genesis was not the smoothest. In fact, he would have had some difficult early days. Not anything having to do with conduct. Um, financially, it was not uh, a smooth start. 
but the school rallied around him and uh, I can tell you he has been one of our success stories. Only at foot form, but I'm telling you he has distinguished himself in so many ways. In fact, a few weeks ago we had our honor roll, we call it the Blue Report here at Wilmers. And uh, he received an upper tier, that's the highest level. Uh, he had worked tirelessly uh, for this. He would have set it as one of his goals to achieve in his fourth form year, and he was successful. He was involved in just about every and anything. As we would say, if the pan knock, David Minot would be somewhere in the midst responding. And uh, he is really a tremendous, a very principled young man, very enthusiastic. If you want someone uh, through whose veins you could say maroon and gold blood runs, it is David Minot. I was a friend and classmate of David since fourth form. I met him in first form when we were in um, ISCF and Passion and Purity together. He always asked me if I wasn't coming to meet in um, Mr. Mr. Norman, who is the supervisor for the club. He, he was waiting on me and David was always telling me how I should come and behave myself and serve God more. He was an ambitious and inspiring young man. He motivated me to do a lot of stuff. He wanted to become everything you could think of. He wanted to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an architect, even a prime minister. He said, when I heard about the news of him passing, I still couldn't believe I was in denial because I talked to him Wednesday and he said when he was leaving school that I should enjoy my break and keep my head up. He's always inspiring people as he sees them and he's always giving a fist bump. Um, even though I'm still in denial that David has passed and we as a family, a school family, we're still sad. David was who I would refer to as an exemplary human, an exemplary Wilmerian, an exemplary young man, a gentleman. David was outgoing. He interacted with everyone. He was kind to everyone. He was always ready with a smile. He was an advocate for his fellow classmates. Anybody in trouble, you know, David saw it and he sought to help to fix. David was fun loving, he was joyful, he was open. He took it upon himself to ensure that the incoming first farmers had a student, a big brother from upper school would look out for them. He hung out over there and he, as a sub-prefect, um, was really very, very caring and attentive with them. That's just the kind of person he was and he was that person also for, I would say, a cross-section of Wilmers, whether it's students, teachers, parents. David never passed away without saying hello, having a word to say. He was animated. He was, he had manners. He was that young man that you would say was well mannered. Um, and so you felt attached to him. You felt close to him. One of the things I loved about David is he took advantage of opportunities. He placed himself in a position where he could be recognized for um, what he was doing in school and so become a sub-prefect. Uh, last year when we had our first ever Wilma's Boys PTA ch Challenge competition, David was one of the first to enter a chant. He was excited about it um, and he participated. He placed third. He had a brilliant chant. What I loved most about him was how he related to other competitors. Um, he had that spirit that made everyone feel comfortable. We actually recorded the songs at the Sugar Minot Studios and he ensured that all the fellow 
competitors felt welcome. We made sure that all of us as parents, members of the PJ who were there, felt welcome. So do you remember the last encounter you had with him? Yes, yes. What was it like? We, at the PTA, um, treated each year group for a child's month. We treated them to slushy, a refresher after a long day of school. And so we had uh, the fourth form slushy on the Monday, and David was served with slushy. However, on the Wednesday when we had our third form year group slushy, I saw David downstairs and he came and he said, oh, I want an extra slushy. Now, of course, they had gotten slushy on the Monday. So, no, David, you know you can't get. But David was the, the kind of person who you wanted to go an extra mile for, you know. He just had that spirit. And as he walked away, he and another fellow, I saw them and I said, no, man, come back. And he ran back, collected the two extra slushies, smile big and run off that was my last encounter with him i did see him the morning of that same day and he was i mean i guess he was telling everybody about it but he was excited about this church trip you know but my last encounter of it was of him smiling he was happy He's involved in church activities and church. So oh, yes. Could you tell us, uh, do you know a little bit about his adventure in the Christian? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, last year, David received Youth of the Year Award at the church. He was the public relations officer for the ISCF at school here. David led by faith. If you interacted with David, you knew he was a Christian. He was the first to pray on a trip. We had a trip to Maroon Town. We were known into Portland and David was on the bus. He prayed. He prayed for all the students. He was the first to pray and to give comfort to classmates who had just lost his father. He was, he led devotions in class. Um, he was the first to speak to you openly about his faith, his strong belief in God, which he took from his grandmother, um, who is a big part and a major influence in his life. Um, he would just about make himself always available to tell you about Christ. And in his character and in his actions, you saw Christ in him. You saw that he was led by his faith. David took advantage of opportunities. Um, he, in every single way, I would say, was the ideal winner and he saw promise. And so last year at the PT, we learned of an opportunity for students to receive scholarship. And we, um, I nominated David for that scholarship. David and another young man, and they both received it. So there would be often times interaction between he and myself. Warning! Ratings this larger than life, you mongers. Ratings! This impotence, are you blessed?